World War II. We left it on a bit of a cliffhanger last time, and I don't want to leave the world in flux like that, so today we're going to check out Oversimplified's World War II Part 2. Welcome back, friends, and a special welcome, welcome to all the new friends out there. I'm Yo BGS, admitted history noob. I thought I knew a lot about history, and then I got into Bill Wirtz, I got into Oversimplified, and I'm like, okay, I know an embarrassingly small amount of what's been going on in the world. And we were checking out Oversimplified's World War II history, and we actually got through part one the other day. Like I said, the world's in a bit of flux. Germany has kind of taken over Europe. The U.S. hasn't done a whole lot of anything yet, so I'm very interested to see where this is gonna go. Cause you know I couldn't read a history book or anything. Uh, if you do like this video, please make sure to subscribe. It helps the channel out more than you know, and I know then that you want to see some more of this kind of stuff. So, here we go. So what else is happening? I was about to say, I hope I get a recap of like part one here because admittedly my brain memory's not so good anymore. When I said Britain was all alone, that wasn't entirely true. Many Commonwealth nations and other allied colonies had joined the war in Britain's support. They would play a key role throughout the war, particularly in the African and Italian campaigns. On the Axis side, Germany, Italy, and Japan signed the defensive tripartite pact, bringing their military alliance even closer together. The Soviet Union's war against Finland should have been an easy victory, but it became a humiliating struggle, and their military ineptitude was put on full display. Interesting how history repeats itself. I mean, don't worry, I'm not gonna make pithy current political comments the whole video. I was just, that was, that, that is bitingly relevant. In the end, they did force the Finns to sue for peace. Then, they continued their honorable campaign of pushing around much smaller countries by annexing the Baltic states and part of northern Romania. France's colonies in equatorial Africa were like, heck no, we aren't going to join the Germans, and they all pledged their allegiance to... <laughs> Wait a minute, heck, heck no, no. we aren't going to join the Germans. Uh, that is Felix Abue in reference to joining the heckin Germans. Germans, and they all pledged their allegiance to free France, except for Gabon, which had to be taken by military force. The Allies also tried to capture the strategic port of Dakar, but that ended in failure. Mussolini had seen Hitler's successes, and he thought now it was Italy's time to shine. God, I forgot we started this whole thing with Mussolini and getting arrested a bunch for protesting. See, it's all coming back. And I remember, and a lot of you left comments down below kind of shedding some light on this. It's always been amazing to me that with the much significantly... Uh, lower population of the world compared to how it is now that like France with their smaller population was able to just own all of this and then what is that that would be Germany is able to own like all of this it just that breaks my brain because this would have just been huge swaths of like unowned land so someone in theory could just walk in behind them and be like yeah no Mine. So he tried to take British Somaliland, and that went pretty well. Then he tried to take Egypt, and that went less well. Then he tried to take Greece, and that went really badly. Churchill began referring to Italy as Europe's soft underbelly. Wow. <laughs> he began favoring a military campaign from the south and started sending British troops to Greece. All of this had Hitler pretty concerned, and he moved to protect his southern flank. He had been getting friendly with Hungary and twisted their arm into signing the Tripartite Pact and joining the Axis powers. That doesn't really sound like friendship to me. I don't know, maybe I've been making the wrong kind of friends. Romania was also eager to join for protection against the Soviet Union. The Tripartite Pact was designed to prevent any other countries from deciding to join the Allies. Specifically, Britain's old ally, the pesky United States of America. When war first broke out, American public opinion was strongly against joining in. In 1940, there was an election. The Republican candidate said, I will Will not send any young Americans to die in Europe. And sitting President Franklin D. Roosevelt said, I will also not send any young Americans to die in Europe. Unless I have to, then I might. And Roosevelt won. Churchill asked him to join. Yeah, any again, anytime you can get two politicians on both sides to agree on literally anything. The war. But Roosevelt said, no can do, Winston. But you know what? Here, have some weapons. America began supplying the Allies with food and munitions. But there was one problem. German U-boats were sinking thousands of Allied supply ships in the Atlantic, including American ones. If the Germans thousands. could sever Britain's supply line, the UK would starve. Throughout the war, the Allies had to come up with better technology to fight the U-boats. Improved radar, aircraft with longer range, better weaponry and convoy tactics. At one point, a man even called a meeting and said, Pycrete, you take some wood, you take some ice, you put them together, you get Pycrete. And then he pulled out a gun and shot some wood and it shattered. And then he shot some Pycrete and the bullet ricocheted off it and hit someone else in the conference. What? Then what? They tried to make a Wait a minute, that that actually happened? You forget like 
during wartime, collateral damage of someone dying to demonstrate frozen wood is just like, that's a thing people are okay with, apparently. The Pycrete aircraft carrier. But that idea was scrapped because that's a really dumb idea. In the end, Alan Church. <laughs> Dude, I love, I love oversimplified. I mean, you can't get more oversimplified than they wanted to do this. That's stupid. No. And his team of code breakers cracked Germany's Enigma code, and the U-boats gradually became less and less of a threat. Back in Africa, Britain decided to push Italy out of Egypt. Hey, that was pretty easy. So they kept going. Hitler realized he was going to have to finally step in and do something. He went to Bulgaria and Yugoslavia and said, Hey, I'm going to move troops through you to get to Greece. So either join us or, you know, be invaded. Bulgaria opted to join them. Yugoslavia opted to be invaded. Then Greece finally fell to the joint German-Italian invasion. But, like, the British the had moved troops thing. from North Africa to fight in Greece, which helped Rommel and his tank divisions push the British back to Egypt. And they could have kept going, but a small, mostly Australian force oh, held out... Oh, man, okay. Story time. Um, there's a guy you can Google. His name is Don Fida, F-I-D-A. Uh, he was a, he fought in like literally tons of battles in the Pacific. He fought in Alaska in World War II, which I don't even know if Oversimplified is going to get into. But um, for the radio, I interviewed him for like an hour and a half. And some of the stories he told like will stick with me. I'm going to post the audio from it at some point, probably on just some different channel or something. But he talked about how when they were training, they were training to go fight Rommel, and he referred to Rommel as the Desert Fox, and the way that he mentioned him, like, that's just one of those, like, when I heard Oversimplified mention Rommel, I was like, oh, and immediately in my brain, I'm like, Desert Fox, but it was crazy because, again, I'll, I'll be quick with this, they trained uh, Fida and his troops to fight in desert-like conditions, then they sent him to Alaska. Then they sent them to Alaska. Under siege for eight months in Tobruk, denying the Germans a strategic port city and disrupting their supply line. Despite having some success in the Middle East, the British didn't seem like any real threat for now. Hey, Soviet Union, look out. With three million troops, Hitler launched the largest ground invasion in history. And oh, Stalin was that's far dumb. I may not, again, I may be a history noob, but that's stupid. From ready. Both Churchill and Roosevelt had warned him of an impending attack, but he dug his head in the sand and the Soviets didn't stand a chance. Germany made staggering progress, with huge encircling movements capturing mind-boggling numbers of Russian troops. A quarter million at Bialystok, Minsk, 300,000 at Smolensk, nearly 700,000 at Kiev, and again at Vyazma and Bransk. Leningrad was put under a siege that would last an insufferable four years. The invasion of Russia had been Hitler's main ideological goal from the beginning, and his hatred for the ethnic peoples there was now unleashed in all its fury. These but again, my, my overarching thought on all of that is, I don't know what the population of Germany was at this point, but how... The population would be so non-dense that defending anything would be nigh on impossible. The Eastern Front of the Second World War was brutal for all that endured it. The Germans were now inside of Moscow, and that's it. It's all over. But then it happened. It got cold. Stupid cold. Hitler had hoped the Soviets would give up before winter, but they kept fighting. His commanders came to him I can and said, appreciate can we the kitty please poster. dig in for the winter? I hate everything else about the man, but I can appreciate a good kitty poster. And wait until spring? No. Keep going. But oil is literally freezing inside our vehicles. That's fine. Keep going. We're having to leave the corpses of our frozen horses by the side of the road so we can still find our way in the snowdrift. Perfectly normal. Keep going. Hitler hadn't given his millions of men winter clothing and supplies because he thought he really should have won by now. Then, Stalin called in troops from the Siberian front, specially trained to fight in the extreme cold, and the Germans were no match. They were now being pushed back. They had no choice but to dig in and wait for winter to end. Dude, who sees winter and is like, you know what, I want to be specially trained so that I live in that. You know, that's literally the, the, the meme of like, this is where I live now. It's just a guy in a snowdrift. This is where I live now. Germany's victories were staggering, and Japan was eager not to miss the victory bus. Their war in China had come to a standstill, but they wanted to keep expanding their sphere of influence and getting those sweet, sweet raw materials. They began making plans to expand southward, but there was a problem. Southeast Asia was heavily colonized by America and Great Britain. It was also full of ocean. Ocean meant naval combat, and there was no way the Japanese Navy could stand up to the US and the UK. So they thought, wouldn't it be nice <laughs> womp, if we could just- You can't! When talking about war, you can't just randomly go womp womp. So they thought, wouldn't it be nice if we could destroy their navies before we begin our conquest? 
And so it was. On December 7th, 1941, nice isn't the, the word Japanese I launched a surprise air raid on the U.S. Pacific Fleet at Pearl Harbor and inflicted a huge amount of damage. They also attacked British colonies in South... I'm not, I know it's oversimplified, a but... huge amount of 21 ships sunk or damaged, hundreds of aircraft damaged or destroyed. Damage. They also attacked British colonies in Southeast Asia. Roosevelt had no choice but to declare war on Japan, and so did Churchill. Hitler then declared war on America, even though he totally didn't have to. The attack on Pearl Harbor seemed like a big Japanese victory, but they didn't attack any of the naval repair yards, fuel storage tanks, or the submarine base, meaning the Pacific Fleet would be up and running again pretty soon. In the meantime, though, the Japanese were able to begin their conquest. They took Guam, the Gilbert Islands, Wake Island, Hong Kong, and the Philippines. They forced Thailand to join them so they could march their troops through to Malaya. They swept through Singapore, North Borneo, the East Indies, New Guinea, the Solomons, and they were now threatening Northern Australia and the borders of India. Japan's victory had been a... I'm not saying, like... I'm not saying school should be year-round, because, you know, getting outside and playing in the mud is, is an important facet of life, but I feel like at some point I should have known about this, and I say that a lot in, in these videos, but, like, I'm always flabbergasted to find out just how much, uh, you know, we we don't learn like as as Americans when it comes to world history. You know, we learn like okay. Admittedly, I was not dumb enough to think that we started the war. I knew that we came in fairly late in the game, but like the 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 sheer mass of what the U.S. was up against is it's not really something like. You consider staggering as the Germans and reinforced the Japanese idea that this was a divine war which they were destined to win. But their victories had been based on speed, not power, and power would eventually catch up with them. For now, though, in all occupied nations, the people suffered persecution, forced labor, harsh punishments for any who spoke out against their occupiers. In Europe, the Nazis were rounding up ethnic minorities and other unwanted groups and individuals. In particular, millions of Jewish people would suffer through the terrible events. Of the Holocaust. That's putting Brave it resistance lightly. movements rose up in defiance of their invaders while the people held out for hope. And hope was coming. Winter was over and Hitler could continue his push eastward. But this time he switched up his strategy. He wanted to focus on the south. His plan was to cut off the Russian armies in the Caucasus, an area full of oil, and then invade the Caucasus and take all the oil. His forces oh moved across. <laughs> these little, again, these little cyanide and happiness looking cartoons just. You should not, you should not be laughing at Hitler. Cut off the Russian Hitler. armies in the Caucasus, an area full of oil, and then invade the Caucasus and take all the oil. His forces moved across the north with ease, and Hitler got cocky. He rerouted the 4th Panzer Army south early, leaving the 6th Army to complete the encircling movement alone. To do so, the 6th Army had to reach and take the key Soviet city of Stalingrad. The Russians defended it fiercely, and Stalingrad saw some of the harshest fighting of the entire war. The Soviets held up the German advance for five months as they battled in the war-torn city, which bought them valuable time. When the Germans had first launched their invasion a year earlier, the Soviets had moved their factories to the east. Those factories had been building a butt-ton of tanks and aircraft and getting the Soviet army up to scratch. Now. It was ready. Stalin gathered his new and improved forces around the city, and in an attack that resembled Hitler's own encirclement tactics, they- It's wild to think of a time when, like, all industry was literally devoted to war. You know what I'm saying? Like, even now, when a lot of what we have is dedicated to technology and different things, this was literally just- You're not making t-shirts, you're not making water bottles, you're not making- I did Pokemon cards. I'm literally just naming things on my desk at this point. You, it's all just war stuff. If it can't, if it can't be used to hit somebody, shoot somebody, drive over somebody, we're not doing Began it. Began surrounding the sixth army. It's, just, it's hard Hitler's to conceive commanders of came that. Hitler's and said, "Hey, maybe we should retreat." But Hitler said, "No, no, you stay." The entire sixth army was trapped and had to surrender. With complete air superiority, the Soviets started pushing westward. For Stalin, it was a resounding victory. For Hitler, an absolute catastrophe. Things also oh, he doesn't have, but he didn't have the thingy Hitler, things. An absolute. This is a this is a revitalized Hitler. He he doesn't have his his wounds. Absolute catastrophe. Things also weren't looking too good for Hitler elsewhere. With America now in the war, Allied bombing over German cities reached devastating levels. In Africa, the British had pushed Rommel back again. Then they were pushed back again, and finally, after a decisive battle at El Alamein, and with American and British troops arriving in the west, the Germans and Italians were squeezed out of Africa. Japan was also already it's, it's seeing its wild. It's wild how much maps 
and again, I'm stating the obvious, but it's wild how much maps aid in this process. Like being able, I don't know, I guess I'm just a visual learner, but seeing things progress in the way they do in these videos is such an awesome touch. Like it helps way, it helps way more than I ever thought. And it's why I haven't been stopping as much. I'm just engrossed in the pretty colors. Is blue or red gonna cover the map? That's, that's what I have to know. With success being turned around. They attempted to take the island of Midway, but the US Navy was ready for the attack and they sank Japan's carrier. Actually, they sank a lot of them. It was a battle from which the Japanese Navy would never recover. British, Indian, and Chinese troops held the line in the harsh jungle terrain of Burma, and the Japanese suffered losses in the Solomon Islands and New Guinea. They began to realize they were not invincible. With the Axis out of Africa, the Allies had to decide their next move. Churchill still wanted to attack from the south, while the Americans preferred a full sea invasion in northern France. All right, said the Americans, we'll do it your way. Allied forces successfully landed in Sicily and began moving north. They also carried out bombing raids over Rome. The thing was, many of the people in Sicily had relatives living in America, and they greeted the American troops quite warmly. With the war reaching home territory, most Italians just weren't that into it, and Mussolini was suddenly very unpopular. He was voted out by his own fascist Grand Council and was toppled from power. Italy that's, that's one way to be toppled, I suppose. He immediately began negotiations for surrender. Hitler wasn't surprised and had already sent reinforcements southward. In an operation he ironically called Operation Axis, German troops quickly disarmed Italian troops in the north. The Allies continued fighting the Germans up through Italy, but then winter set in, meaning mud, and everything slowed to a halt. All right, said the Americans, let's do it our way as well. Germany had made itself a lot of enemies, and millions of Allied troops had been gathering in England as factories worked around the- <laughs> Screenshot say? And millions- Wikipedia screenshot because I'm lazy. I mean, imagine how I feel. Yeah, Western Allies, everyone- and then, you know, not so much over there. Millions of Allied troops had been gathering in England as factories worked around the clock producing the war material needed for a super crazy massive the likes of which the world has never seen before invasion of Europe. The Germans knew an Allied invasion would come, but they didn't know where it would land. Thanks to Allied deception tactics, they thought there was a pretty good chance it would come at Calais. But the Allies were really going to land in Normandy because it was less fortified and the beaches were nicer. Under the careful planning of General Dwight D. No matter... <laughs> No matter how bad life gets, a nice beach is always the strategy. The Eisenhower, the invasion that had been long in the making, was just about ready to go. Just one thing was preventing the launch, the British weather. For a short while, everyone sat around waiting for a decent day. And then, it came. On the night of June 5th, over Barely. a thousand bombers took off and raided coastline defenses, while paratroopers were dropped inland in a bit of a chaotic operation, tasked with sabotaging defenses and capturing key bridges to stop any German reinforcements from Dude, reaching the beach. Dude, you talk about... You talk about cojones, huevos, whatever language you speak of, of steel, of like solid steel. Anyone involved in this, anyone involved in that is. And, and again, in a lot of those instances, because I you see these videos on YouTube now of, of people that were actually involved in Normandy that had the jobs of going around and literally like, pulling the latches to drop the door to let the tanks drive out. And the situation at the time was so dire that this guy would literally, I'm, I'm trying to remember his name, unfortunately. There was a rabbit hole I went down one day of like people in war doing interviews. and But he would literally drop the thing and then everyone would just get, and then he'd have to go to the next one and do it again. Because if he didn't, then they would be stuck in there and they would either get like bombed or they would drown or, it's 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 bonkers to think about. And again, I'm not breaking any new ground here. I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. But I bra I always say braver people than I when when we talk about you know any type of conflict on the radio because I couldn't do that. I dude, I would just be laying in a corner crying somewhere. You know? Early the next morning, the barrage came as Allied ships fired a huge number of shells at the German fortifications and then the landings. The Americans at Utah and Omaha, the British at Golden Sword, and the Canadians at Juneau. It was a tremendous struggle with a great loss of life, particularly at Omaha. But the Allied troops captured the beaches and the landings were a success. Then they began their movements inland. They took Those photos are just an insane amount of military presence. And that's... That's after, right? That's that's 
as things were dying down. The landings were a success. Meaning in that particular struggle, not the war itself. Then they began their movements inland. They took the port of Cherbourg and the city of Caen. The Americans moved south to capture Brittany. Then, in a massive disaster for the Germans, British and Canadian troops from the north and Americans from the south trapped the German 7th Army in a near wipeout encircling movement. In August, Allied troops landed in the south of France to little resistance. On one beach, all they found was a Frenchman handing out champagne. Paris was liberated, and the Germans were pushed out of France as the Allies entered Belgium. In the far east- I feel like there was a lot more conflict in Northern Africa and Italy than it, it almost sounds in oversimplified. And I say that because my grandpa was in, I believe it was like the 34th Infantry that went to like Monte Carlo and a bunch of places like that, and- I, again, like, you know, because you read about your family that, that do these sorts of things, and I've read about that, and that was, like, it, it, you almost, like, I almost need to just, wait, almost need to walk away from the video for a minute, because you, we like laughing, and, you know, Hitler in the oil field doing the, this thing, but then you think about the real cost of all of it, and it's just like, Jesus Christ. East, the Allies started to push the Japanese out of Burma as the Americans launched a two-pronged offensive in the Pacific. In the south, General MacArthur led the push to liberate the Philippines, while General Nimitz oversaw the brutal island-hopping campaign. American forces had to make hard-fought landing after hard-fought landing. On the island campaign is where my dude, uh, Don Fida, got captured. And, oh my god, okay, so that, I can give you that as, like, the, the ending to his story. He got captured, told me what happened to him. I'm not gonna repeat it, because it makes me, like, sick to my stomach, but... As they were getting ready, the, the German troops were getting ready to, like, dispatch him. Um, these, like, bombs came over the wall. And they blew up the people that were essentially capturing him. And around the corner comes this dude that lived in his neighborhood growing up. And it just happened to be that guy was in the unit that was sent to capture this area. And he ended up setting the guy free, which is, like... I'm just saying, they make the movie about Don Fida. That's all I'm saying. F I D A. Fiercely defended small islands as I they know he's given tons of interviews towards at the this Japanese point. mainland. The Japanese believed that the greatest thing a person could do was to die in battle, and the most dishonorable act was to surrender. As a result, they fought ferociously to the very end. And the closer the Americans got to the mainland, the more ferocious the resistance became. In February 1945, the Americans captured the island of Iwo Jima, and an intense firebombing campaign of Japan's wooden cities began. The Allies suffered some setbacks trying to liberate the Netherlands, but they were making progress and were now threatening the industrial heartland of Germany. Hitler's health, both mentally and physically, was rapidly deteriorating. Things were looking bad and he was desperate. He said, we need to turn this thing around and I have just the trick. Remember a few years back when we blitzkrieged through the Ardennes and trapped the Allied forces in Belgium? Well, I'm gonna do the exact same thing, again. He gathered his forces and tried to pound them through the Ardennes. He used up the remainder of Germany's strength and resources, and he managed to create quite a nice bulge. He also trapped some American oh, come forces on. in the Belgian town. <laughs> See, like again, Battle of the Bulge was super violent conflict, and now I'm just laughing at Germany's bulge. Town of Baston. The Germans sent the trapped Americans a message saying, surrender or be annihilated. When it was read out to the commanding officer, he said, they want to surrender? No, sir, they want us to surrender. Nuts! And that's what they sent off as their official reply. General Patton's Third Army then managed to break the siege from the southwest, Wavos and the Germans of were pushed steel. back. Hitler's last-ditch attempt had failed, and what followed was a total collapse of the German forces. The Allies pushed into Germany from both sides. The Soviet Union took Warsaw and kept pushing to Berlin. In his bunker, Hitler realized all hope was lost. Berlin uh, fell. Well, that is an ironic um, way to to end that subplot. Well, and with it, Hitler's dreams of a great German empire. Two of the Axis nations had been knocked out, one to go. The Americans began their assault on Okinawa, the last island before they would reach the Japanese mainland. The desperate Japanese fought hard, launching kamikaze attacks on the US ships. The citizens of Okinawa suffered through the terrible fighting, but in two months, the island was captured. The Allies now had to make a choice, either continue the devastating struggle up the Japanese mainland, or they could try to coerce the Japanese into surrendering now. In July, the first successful atomic bomb coerce. test took place in New Coerce is a very flowery word for what happened. Mexico, and the destructive weapon was ready for use. America and the UK were also seeing the Soviet Union not so much liberating as occupying its captured territories. And so they wanted to put on a show of force. On August 6th, the A-bomb fell on Hiroshima. Then, on the 9th, Nagasaki. The cities were reduced to rubble, and for the people living there, 
It was a terrible fate. But for the Allies, it achieved their main aim. Again, and I know it's oversimplified, but terrible fate is, I feel like, legions weaker of language than it was. In September, the Emperor announced Japan's surrender, saying the war situation has developed not necessarily to Japan's advantage. After six years, war was finally over. The Allies occupied Japan for eight years. The Emperor was allowed to keep his position, but General MacArthur made sure this picture was printed in the Japanese press to display to the Japanese people that their Emperor was not the divine powerful being they had believed. Germany was divided between America, the UK, France, and the Soviet Union. In 1949, the Allied sectors were united into West Germany. The Second World War had been more terrible and destructive than the first. In its aftermath, two major superpowers with two very different ideologies had come out victorious, and the tension between the two of them would create a new kind of war. A very, very cold one. Wow, Churchill, that looks just like me. And your app is doing really well. And this quesadilla you made is to die for. How'd you learn to do all this stuff? I used the link in the description to- First Skillshare? Oh my god, what a good- Dude, what a good second to the ad read! Two months of Skillshare for just oh, that's cents. genius! Wow, tell me more. Okay, Skillshare is an online learning community with more Wait than. Wait a minute! Classes. I'm starting to think this isn't Churchill at all. The drawing comes right off. All right, so Skillshare is a thing you can use if you want to do things and stuff and stuff and things. Um, I don't even know if this link is still active. I don't want you to think that I'm sponsored by Skillshare, but if that's something you want to do, go to Oversimplified page, use Oversimplified's link. Um, and, and get them some money because that seems like a pretty sweet idea. Maybe I can learn. Maybe I can. Can I learn history on Skillshare? Can I learn how to not be not be bad at things there? Okay, so um, that was again, I, like you know, you know from history classes, you know from things you read online, um, what happened. But seeing it in text versus, I, I think I'm a visual learner because seeing it play out in that way put a whole new 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 like uh, light on things that i had not expected going into this video so i'm happy you guys have sent me down the history rabbit hole i think i gotta check out the history of germany bill Wirtz video also some of uh maybe oversimplified stuff as well leave a comment down below if there's something you want me to see take care friends and as always i will see you for the next one